So this is another Sharp Edge development update today. I'm going to be showing off a few more of the new features. Um, I haven't had a, like made a load of progress on this over the last week or so, but I've made some and some very useful progress. So um, you can actually fully place objects in the scene now. Uh, you can position them and rotate them, transform them, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can't currently modify the z-coordinate or scale, but you can rotate along the z-axis and position, which allows you to sort of throw together little basic scenes. Um, along with this functionality also comes clipboard functionality, which I'll get to in a minute, and a couple of changes to a few other things um, in a couple of different places. So all of these currently individual objects, and I can select them, I can move them, I can place them. Um, I've also got this little sort of fake kind of water shader going on here. Uh, change the cube map to a sky so the reflection is clouds and I think it just looks a little bit better. Um, this is sort of the start, the basis for how I'd want a water shader to look so you can kind of control the glossiness of the water just with standard lighting properties. Um, this would look better with texture filtering on at the moment, it's off. Um, and then the normal map also bumps the reflection. A couple of things I'd want to make this do is have the water actually animate dynamically, so there's a bit of vertex uh, modification going on there that would make everything flow a little bit more, and then maybe do something uh, where I shift the normal map along, maybe merge it with other normal maps moving in different directions to create a sort of flow kind of thing. Um, and that would create kind of more realistic looking water. The third thing I can do is parallax mapping, uh, which I've demonstrated previously, and uh, I could use that to give the water a little bit more depth, um, so rather than just sort of having this fake illusion of lighting, the pixels physically pop out um, on the water surface, meaning I can keep the water relatively low poly, like it is at the moment, like each one of these blocks is a four plane piece, so each of these is eight polys, so this entire water area isn't that high poly. This isn't really a good demonstration of a decent looking scene because I've just kind of thrown together a little random stuff. I haven't really bothered to try and make it look too much like a scene but um, as you can see I've got these material settings still going. Quite a lot of materials in here now and um, what I wanted to show off is some of the new functionality so I can select objects now. I can do control C, control V and I can create a little movable copy and there is group movement, group rotation, so things can be moved in a group and then placed again. Um, this functionality comes in really handy for dealing with repetitive scenes. And then if I say I wanted to just move this a little bit, I could also do that. And uh, everything rotates correctly around the artist's defined origin when you're rotating a single object, whereas when you're rotating multiple, it'll do it around the selection origin. Um, and that's really useful. Uh, so like I say, if I wanted to widen this uh, like walkway, I could do that and place another walkway. I'm just going to pop this down right about there for demonstration purposes. The next thing is the standard ability to place things. Uh, this isn't anything fancy. I'm just going to throw together some simple textures and uh, create prefab. Prefab Explorer is standard. Um, so now I've created this little post object and this won't align properly at all with anything because it's not really the right grid size. But again I can move if I select this and select that. Control V, Control C. I can create a copy of that. Keep on doing that until I have a few of those. If I get in the texture and my rope model, create that, create that, drag that into there, and place the rope in the scene. I can place the rope down. This rope model is not aligned properly because it requires precise grid alignment, uh, but you get the drift of what that could look like. Um, the final thing which has been added is the ability to 
export we've created. Um, so I can go over here, hit export, and it'll take a couple of seconds to process all the geometry. And in the meantime, I can open up the folder where all of this will be getting saved. And it'll export into a nice, usable, and importable format. So here, this the maps are exported. That took about 15, 16 seconds for this entire scene. It's not a massively complicated scene. Obviously, you can expect to wait a little bit longer if you've got more going on. There's 500 unique objects in here, which is quite a lot, actually. Um, and that number could potentially increase quite a bit faster. Um, especially when you're talking about lots of objects. However, we will be introducing things like wall tools and floor tools, which will fundamentally reduce the number of objects they use. So this entire water plane, for example, could just be one giant floor, rather than having to be loads and loads of individual objects like it is at the moment, because it's just this is contributing a lot to the high object count. Um, so if I go into the exported folder here, um, the map config gets exported. This contains a little bit of information about the materials. Uh, it's not complete at the moment, but uh, you get the textures that have been used exporting to here. So you can see here that there are 15 unique textures, and that will correlate to, well, in this case, 13 unique draw calls because some objects share the same texture, um, or the same material. The way the export works is that objects that use a unique material will all get compiled down into the same geometrical group and what that means is that it will be a single draw call. So in this case this map, despite having a number of different textures, actually these textures contribute to normal maps and specular maps as well, um, the actual amount of draw calls is simply 13 and that's the whole point of this editor really. To so take a scene like this which consists of 536 unique objects and collapse it down into 13 draw calls rather than 536 draw calls. Um, then the same goes for things like shadows, um, those will get compiled into even fewer because any opaque geometry, for example, the only thing that's not opaque in this are the trees, the two tree types, everything else can get flattened into one geometrical group, meaning that all shadows simply take one or two, three draw calls and very, very few texture swaps only for those transparent textures, uh, which means shadow rendering will be much, much faster than standard rendering and it will also mean shadow rendering in general will be much much faster than your conventional means of doing it and all that will be controlled through the internal editor. In the prefab properties we're going to add settings here which allow you to define whether an object uh, casts shadow or not uh, that will also influence the shadow geometry and then the material will also have certain properties which dictate whether a specific texture is transparent or not and that will ultimately define which objects appear in the shadow mesh and which ones don't and appear in their own sub-shadow meshes. Um, so that's pretty much progress so far. Um, again, these are just really basic little scenes, ideally with the final editor, especially when we you start seeing shadows as well. Hopefully you'll be able to make things that look quite a bit more impressive than this, and that's the end goal, really. Um, the main thing I'm working on is just getting the editor features up to scratch. At the moment we still only have interactive mode which is where things follow your mouse and rotate with that. Uh, I've mucked up this alignment now. Um, however I will plan on adding a static edit mode which doesn't lock to your mouse and that will essentially consist of little grab tools that you can use to rotate, translate, scale and so on. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that for this update. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.